Was this intentional? Like, is this something you growing up, you said, I am going to, to make it into circles that most people will never have the opportunity to be in. I'm going to be working hand in hand with people that other people might read about, see on TV, because you have really found your way into these incredible circles that are not easy to get into. No, that's a great question. And, and it's funny because I, you know, now in, in, the, in the second half of my life and my career, right, you know, I, I call myself in the beginning of the third quarter, um, have, have really made the transition from, from instinct to intention, right? Um, and so, you know, quite honestly, um, you know, I got in those rooms really just based on instinct, right? I, so when I, I came to New York, I was, shit, I was 21 years old, 20 or 21 years old. Um, I went to an event that was produced by, um, which is interesting because now I could call these guys like my brothers, but by, by Chuck Bone and Wendell. Uh, it was a, a thing called New York Live. And, and I went and I saw literally every artist that I ever heard on the radio performing live. And the whole thing was being put together by young black people who look like me, dress like me, talk like me. And it really just, it opened my eyes to something that I didn't even think was possible. Um, but you know, we, I, I grew up in Jersey. I went to college. I planned on being, you know, an accountant or a doctor or something, you know, one of those things that they say that you have to be to be successful. I planned on being successful for sure. I just didn't know how I was going to get there. Um, when I got, when I got to New York and I, and I, and I fell in love with the energy and the movement that was taking place being really, really driven by young black people, um, you know, I, I really just hung out with no agenda, right? I got to know a bunch of people um, and, and really just took my time. So, so I guess, you know, the taking my time part was intentional. Um, I definitely did not just take any opportunity that came my way. Um, it's kind of ironic. I actually, I ended up working with Puff for a long time and definitely consider him one of my closest friends um, today. But I was actually offered an opportunity to interview for a job at Bad Boy when Bad Boy first started. Um, Kirk Burroughs called me and asked me to interview for a product manager position because he knew I did marketing or was interested in marketing. Um, and I decided not to go to the interview because I had heard so many crazy stories about Puff. I heard about you know, phones at people and I was like, nah, I ain't with that. Me and, me and Puff gonna be fighting if he throw a phone. It's gonna ruin my whole career before I even get started. So, you know, I guess I was intentional in terms, about, in terms of knowing sort of organically what I thought was for me and what wasn't for me. But quite honestly, a lot of this stuff just happened to me, man. Um, just being in the right place at the right time, um, you know, keeping my heart in the right place. Um, and really, and, and, I, and I say this because this is something that I really um, try to tell young people, like, you know, having meetings with people with no agenda um, is a powerful thing. Because when you have a meeting and you need it to happen, there's a lot more pressure on the conversation. Right. When you just having a conversation with someone with no agenda, um, you know, you, you really unlock a lot of conversation, information and opportunity that you may not have gotten to if you were singularly focused on landing this job or landing this deal. And so for me, you know, it was really um, me just hanging out, man. And, and it's funny because like. Um, the first real interaction that I had in the entertainment business was playing basketball, right? So I, I, I you know, I, I came to the city, um, I, I hung out every night. Um, me and my brother, Brett Wright, um, who at the time had been, um, he was the, the VP of marketing at Uptown Records. He and I, we had a, he had a company called Yo B Consulting. Um, I was the, I was probably like the first ever employee of Yo B Consulting. And we did this thing called the Music Basketball Association. So we had like a league with all of the, the entertainment companies. We had, it was Bad Boy, um, Epic Records, The Source, Vibe Magazine, uh, with a bunch of labels. And you know, every Monday we would have games at Martin Luther King High School on 68th in Amsterdam. And, um, and I was like, you know, the organizer of the league. And then uh, on Tuesday morning, I would send the stats from each game. Um, but, you know, I always made it super entertaining. So, I, you know, I would give people nicknames. You know, I remember Keith Klingscales at the time was the, the CEO of Vibe Magazine. Uh, he and his brother were on a team, so I had the brothers Klingscales. So the brothers Klingscales would have 15 points, 17 rebounds, and 12 fouls, because they always had 12 fouls, because they was hacking it up. Um, and so, you know, I got to know people more personally before I really engaged them professionally. 
Um, and that's been something, that's a through line in my career because you know now I feel like every cultural phenomenon that's happened over the last 20 years is either connected to somebody that I know or is one phone call away. And so I think I really focus on, and like again, this was not intentional. I, I, I can tell you, I can unravel the story now looking back on it. Mm -hmm. um, but I think I established my ecosystem first, right? You know, people that I could count on, that I could call friends, that I could call for a favor. I established that first. And then I got sort of got in it and had opportunities that gave me an opportunity to exercise that ecosystem, right? And so, so I think, yeah, but now, you know, and now that I'm older, you know, showing up more prepared and being intentional about my, my journey um, has a lot more value because now we don't have as much time. So when I, you know, when I came to New York, I was 20 years old, I had no kids, right? I had no wife, I had no responsibilities, I didn't have no real bills. Um, and so I had a lot more time to be willy nilly about, you know, I was hanging out in the club till late hours at night. I remember, you know, one of the first jobs I had was this company called The Streets, which was started by Chris Latimer. You know, Chris Latimer actually was the first person to start the whole concept of product placement, right? So when you would watch like, the Snoop Gin and Juice ver uh, uh, video and see him wearing those hockey jerseys, or when you watch the Naughty by Nature video and they were wearing hockey jersey, that was a result of um, Chris Latimer having a being on retainer with CCM, which was the company that owned the license for NHL hockey. They were trying to make their make their jerseys more relevant, and he placed them in music videos. And I remember, you know, I was like working a, um, a temp job. I was I was PC support at Citibank. Was the city? It's not even called. Wasn't even Citibank. It was called something else back then. Might have been like um, I forgot the name of it. But I worked at a bank in the daytime um, from from eight to five, and then I would I would go in the bathroom and put on Tims and jeans, and then go to the streets <laughs> and work there from like five thirty to eleven o'clock at night. And then I would get a ride back to Brooklyn with Chris Latimer, and we would go to his crib and play uh, jump and play Madden until like three o'clock in the morning. And so I had a lot more time. Now you know I'm 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 sleep by ten o'clock. Cause I don't, I don't got the energy I used to have. So I got to be a little bit more intentional around how I use my time. Mm -hmm. but, um, but yeah, so, so I think that it, it wasn't intentional. I think I had a certain energy that, um, you know, brought certain things to me, right? Because, because like I said, I was focused on the friendships more than I was focused on the opportunities. And I think there was something genuine about that that maybe people weren't used to because at the time everyone was trying to figure out how to get on. Like that was really, the, that was really the assignment. How do I get on? How do I lock into one of these big organizations? How do I get a job with a Puff? How do I get a job with a Jay-Z? Um, and I was probably one of the strange folks that would ever say, nah, I don't wanna, I don't wanna, I don't wanna talk, I don't wanna interview with Puff, right? Um, and also because I was also mindful of wanting to engage those types of folks when I had something to offer, right? Yep. And, I was, and I was still figuring it out. I didn't know, you know, how I fit into this thing. You know, it's funny because I, I originally, intended to be in a and r and i intended to be in a and r because i had heard all of the amazing things that puff was doing um and i remember like wendell haskins he was a, he was a friend i remember you know doing a call with him and and he was the first one that like let me know that i had no idea what i was even talking about when i said <laughs> i wanted to be in a and r because he was like explaining what it was and i was like oh yeah nah that don't sound like something i want to do um but you know so i you know i took my time and, and, and I think that was the most important time. I, I gave myself enough time. I took my time and I, and I did a lot of things with no agenda. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.